Hey guys. Hi guys. So let me see this in the chat. Quick reminder, please add yourself to the attendee list in the uh, meeting minutes. Um, also, please note this call will be recorded uh, automatically. In fact, it's already being recorded uh, and posted to YouTube. And we usually get going about five after. Did anything change it in the meeting note uh, for share access? At least I could not add myself to the list. No, there shouldn't be. Let me let me check and see what the share settings are. Um, oh, that's not good. Um, anyone with the link can edit. There we go. Not sure why it got set differently than that. So I have now updated. You should now be able to add yourself to the list. Apologies. Do confirm whether or not you're able to. Not sure how that got screwed up. No, nope. just uh, view mode. Uh, try refreshing your page because I've I've have changed the share, but you may have to refresh the page for that to propagate. Oh yeah. So and thank Looks you for bringing nice that up. Now. I'm sure everybody else is having exactly the same issue. So, thanks for speaking up. Is someone able to share the um, meeting minutes with the call? Thank you, Nikolai. Much appreciated. Get started in a brief moment.
Okay, let's get started. Well, first, can people hear me? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So, welcome to the next Network Service Mesh meeting. Um, uh, we have this meeting every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time. We also have a Asia-friendly time, which occurs, um, every, I believe, every uh, other week at 3 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, Nikolai, do we have one uh, today? Um, no, it's, uh, it was last week, and then it's next week. So we'll have one in next week. Yep. We also participate in the CNCF um, SIG network, which occurs every first and third Thursday of every month at, um, this occurs at, uh, I think one, I want to say 1, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, it's definitely not 11 a.m. Pacific time. And, um, it's interlaced with the CNC, with the Kubernetes network SIG. So whenever there is a Kubernetes network SIG on, uh, there is not a CNCF network SIG and vice versa. Um, upcoming events. On March 18th, I will be giving a talk at Go San Francisco on Cloud Native Zero Trust, which will include NSM in it, plus other projects that are in the CNCF. And uh, March 30th through April 2nd, we have KubeCon, Cloud Native Con Europe coming up, which uh, is happening at the RAI Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And the agenda is now up. So uh, we have a pretty good lineup of talks that are NSM related. We have the CNC, we, we also have a co-located event, NSM Con, which is occurring on day zero on uh, March 30th. The, the proposals close on Valentine's Day, February 14th. So please go ahead and uh, submit before, uh, before then. Uh, I highly recommend the 13th if you're doing something. And schedules will be posted on February 21st. We also have some available sponsorships. So uh, please go and download the prospectus, which is linked here if you are interested in uh, sponsoring the uh, conference. Uh, we have ONES coming up. Uh, CFPs have already closed. Uh, we are waiting for the announcements in early March. And that will be held in Los Angeles in, um, in April 20 to 21st. Other upcoming things include KubeCon Cloud Native Ch uh, Con China in Shanghai. The CFPs close in uh, February 21st, so a couple of weeks from now. The notifications will be in May and schedule announced in May 13th. Uh, and finally, ON ONES Europe, it will be in the end of September. The CFPs are currently open, I believe are they open? Yeah, and they, they, they close in June 7th. The notifications for those will go out in, in July 9th. And finally, there's KubeCon, Cloud Native Con in Boston. And the CFPs open on April 22nd. Um, and they close in June 12th. The notifications will be out in September and schedule announcements will be September 16th. Uh, highly likely there'll be an NSM con day zero event there, zero, uh, stay tuned for that. And with that, are there any other events that people want to announce? I think that's a pretty thorough list. I think so too. So um, I know these get repetitive at times, but the idea is to help remind people about CFPs. So, um, so I think, so I think this is uh, for me. This is quite quite useful. It's it saved me many times from uh, from forgetting to submit things. Cool. We also have um, in the in the announcements. Uh, we've made this announcement before. There is a new cross 
project project page, which is uh, linked in the agenda. You can also find it by going to the Network Service Mesh Organization in, on GitHub and clicking on the Projects tab. And for Social Media Community Team, um, do we have Ashley on the call? Yes, I am here. Hello, everybody. Cool, so, you've got the floor. Thanks. So this past week, again, we have had some steady increase in numbers and engagement on the Network Service Mesh Twitter and LinkedIn account. As far as followers go, we've gained an additional seven. We followed an additional 10 accounts and tweets and retweets, a total of 21 in Twitter. Um, included in those, as far as NSMCon related tweets, um, some general event details, some retweets by Gary about NSMCon, um, getting the word out there from him as well. Some CFP due date reminders last week, Friday, a one week reminder, as well as another one out yesterday. And that'll be the main focus of this week. Um, just reminding people to get their proposals in before the deadline on Friday. Um, in general, tweets, call reminders, video recaps from previous meetings, CNCF news related, there was a really nice cloud native landscape board shared a few times on Twitter this week. So got that out, nice visual there. And then individual tweets for CNCF weekly webinars. Other events that were promoted this week was the Intro to NSM, which is a Cloud Native meetup happening in Austin next week, and general tweets and retweets about open source service mesh and containers. As far as LinkedIn goes, we gained an additional eight followers and posted the same as any original tweets that went out through the Network Service Mesh Twitter account. As far as the plan for the next week, uh, to continue with NSMCon related tweets, mostly focusing on CFPs as those are due at the end of this week, start uh, bumping up the sponsorship tweets as well and um, any other events, because it seems like there are a lot that are starting to pop up and um, some individual NSM sessions that will be presented at KubeCon that is on the list for this week as well. So I do see that uh, the next point recently in NSMCon, there is some information there. So I'll go and dig in and see if there's anything worth tweeting about um, there as well. And again, if there's anything else that needs to be promoted, then please do let me know. Fantastic, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. We, we do appreciate the thoroughness of all of this. We're incredibly blessed to have a uh, strong social media community in NSM. No problem. So another nice thing that uh, we will eventually do, and maybe we should do it sooner than later before it gets too unwieldy, is uh, see about grabbing some of those stats and sticking them on a uh, sticking them on a spreadsheet so we can look at the uh, uh, the change over time and uh, make pretty graphs out of them. Uh, <laughs> not suggesting you have to do this. Uh, this is something that, that we can uh, that we can take up, uh, but. You know, well, we actually definitely... have that tracked on our end, so I can send that over to you at some point as well. Oh, cool. Well, when you think the uh, the graph looks uh, ni nice enough and tells a good story, and, you know, we'd love to see something in that area. Sure. Cool. Well, I think that you all think of everything, so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Um, can we get the, uh, the the agenda back when you're ready? There we go. Fantastic. Great. Um, okay, so recently in NSM, so are these from the 7.30 uh, yeah. a.m. Pacific? Uh, no, they, they, sort of. I mean, effectively, this was, I, I went through and scraped some of the stuff that's landed recently to put this together just to sort of highlight some of the things that are going on to the broader community. It's super easy to get lost in the flurry of PRs and things, and a lot of good stuff has been happening. Um, so I wanted to sort of point out some of it. So we got the SRIOV API changes have landed in the API repo, um, which is great news. Um, the SDK kernel guys have started moving forward um, in the SDK kernel repo um, with uh, Zemic landing the uh, mockable net uh, link client, which is 
super helpful because that means it becomes easy to unit test things. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, and, and also for the SROV API stuff, that's, that's also Zemic. Um, so the core DNS fan out plugin, this is the plugin that we wrote so that we can appropriately propagate DNS over network services. And Denise has gone ahead and engaged with the upstream core DNS folks. And they have at the level of concept said they're perfectly happy to have this land as a um, internal plugin to core DNS, which means it will be available out of the box, which means we can consume the out of the box core DNS, which is really good news. Um, anything you want to say about either of those, Zemek or Denise? Not really. Uh, maybe one news. Uh, we also had this PR uh, against the SRLV network device plugin that allows for uh, overwriting resources uh, names that's going to be useful with NSM and it already got uh, merged to the master branch there. So. Awesome. Another, another good news, yeah. Very cool. Cool. So I do have a question on the NetLink one because uh, that is incredibly vague and specific at the same time. Uh, <laughs> not, not everyone knows what NetLink is. Um, you can think of it as a kernel messaging system. Um, the question that I have is uh, at what level of detail do we, do we go with NetLink? Like, where are we able to mock pretty much any NetLink message or just the ones related towards, uh, towards networking? And we're mostly uh, wrapping the Golang NetLink library uh, for manipulating uh, network interfaces that are handled by uh, kernel modules. Uh, that's pretty much it. And currently we're focusing on basic stuff like uh, setting IP addresses, dating IP addresses, changing admin state, and, and so on. The, the, the cool part about it is that now we can actually test without having to set up NetLink. Uh, which means we can write unit tests that can be run everywhere, not just on a Linux box. Yeah, this is very exactly. Nice. Yeah, and we've had this issue before with uh, CNI plugin or device plugin in other communities uh, where we were blocked by uh, CI, for example. How are we gonna test uh, SRLV related stuff on Travis, right? So there's the only way to do that is to create a wrapper like the one we already have in NSM. Okay, so this this makes sense to me. Thank you very much. Um, okay, and so we also have, I guess, do you, do you want to continue on, Ed? Sure. Uh, so, um, the we, Denise, did you have anything you wanted to say about the core DNS fan out plugin stuff? Oh, no, uh, you say it. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, no, but it's, it's very exciting. Um, so cool. On the, the, the next up that I wanted to point out was, and I know that, that we have some people who care a lot about SRV6 in the community. And an SRV6 mechanism chain element um, was landed in the SDK VPP agent so that we should have SRV6 support um, in that forwarder. Um, obviously, you know, the API is, the mechanism API is fairly generic. So uh, any other forwarder could also implement it. Um, but it, you, at the end of the day, what you wind up with is the ability to have virtual wires that are based on SRV6. Now, for those who don't know that segment routing V6, it's super cool if you're networking, if you're network geeky, um, but cool. Um, anybody have comment? I know Artem isn't here today. Anyone have comments or questions on that? I got a comment on that. Um, one of the things I find very interesting with this is that SRV6, you can think of as another way to implement um, or shape traffic. So it has roots in like NSH for those of you that are familiar with it. The thing that I find really interesting is uh, I remember having a conversation with, uh, with multiple people at a previous ONS and some people were of the opinion that uh, SRV6 is like one of the next best things coming up ahead. And others were are a bit cautious and thinking, oh, they were going back to the entire time where we were focusing on network uh, uh, circuitry and, and dedicated paths and we're weary of that. What's interesting is that uh, the type of 
of abstraction we have with the vWire um, actually makes it very easy to to shift from one to the, to the other in terms of your like it's the same model of of thinking at the top level that works across both the circuit and, and switch based uh, paths at least on the conceptual level and so I think this is going to this is going to help a lot of people who they can when they implement their their systems uh, they don't like they still have to worry like this is my does my infrastructure support SRV6 or not? But at the top level, they're not going to have to really think about those particular things. They just have to think about how do I wire things together and they and make them work. And so uh, there's there's a really interesting abstraction that uh, that 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 occurs that, uh, uh, that that's very that to me feels very natural about uh, uh, how all this stuff ends up in, uh, interoperating all together. And um, to add to this, uh, something that's not mentioned on the list because it's not yet uh, merged, but still, if you don't have SRV6, but uh, you happen to want to use a more recent kernel that have uh, the WireGuard uh, enabled, you might be able to switch to WireGuard instead. Mm -hmm. This is true. Yep, yep. Now, one of our great strengths is actually our flexibility around the mechanisms. Um, because it turns out that um, there are entire holy wars that people want to fight over these things. And we just sort of shrug and say, just whatever you want, dude, it's fine. Um, <laughs> so, cool. So that's exciting. Um, the other thing is the initial cross-connect chain landed in the SDK BBP agent. So this is sort of, this gives you an idea of how all the chain elements would string together to form a cross-connect network service um, for a forwarder. So that's probably an interesting thing to go look at. Um, you know, it sort of shows where the pieces actually sort of fit together and it literally is something you can probably look at and see in a single screen because it's very semantic at the level of the chain. It's literally saying you do these things and then you do those things, um, in a list. So, um, that's actually pretty good stuff. Um, then the, so any, any questions on that or I, I'd encourage folks to go take a look. It's pretty simple to read through. Cool. And then the other one I wanted to call out because this has me super excited because I love things that increase testability. Um, the gRPC folks finally realized that having gRPC client connect be a um, struct was really a bummer when you're trying to test things. Um, and so they created gRPC client con interface to replace it. Um, and we are most of the way now to having adopted that inside our own code. Uh, we're just waiting on the VPP agent stuff to catch up. Um, and they're on, they're, they should be doing that shortly. I've, I've chatted with them. And what this will allow us to do is when you want to go test a thing, um, you can literally um, provide a client con interface that's mocked out instead of one that will do real connections. So you can string together things that normally would talk over the network with gRPC. You can string them together with these mockable uh, client con interfaces and the net result will be unit testable. So you could sort of literally stand up the entire virtual system in a unit test. And while that doesn't get the places where it touches the outside world, um, it does a lot to keep the system stable and, and functional uh, as you make changes in the code. So I think something that will be useful for the broader community is uh, once once we're comfortable with where these things are and are seeing them working well, uh, we should probably do like a short, could be a five or 10 minute uh, YouTube video and stick it on for people to see the netlink mocked out, to see gRPC client connections mocked out and, and the testability of the system in order to encourage other projects to take similar uh, similar paths and similar roles in uh, in their own projects, and yeah. like that's two areas where you look at at any CNI plugin, you look at a, at a plethora of different uh, systems are out there uh, that rely on Go and networking. They almost all exclusively use the same Netlink library. Uh, I forget the name of the of the individual who wrote it, uh, but uh, and and they and mo and several of them also. Uh, end up using uh, uh, gRPC for other particular projects as well. And so being able to show those things off is, uh, is 
incredibly useful. Yep. No, and, and I mean, it, it, my guess is that that if if um, Vish Abrams had actually written his Netlink library in a way that was mockable, like it would have saved saved hundreds of people writing wrappers and shim layers. <laughs> so. Yeah, and he did a fantastic job with the actual Netlink library and functionality itself. So like, don't don't get us wrong with that. You know, it's a, it's a pretty oh, amazing oh, library. It is. It is. And in from from the sort of simple usability point of view, it's actually right. It, it sort of reminds me of what happened with the Logris stuff, where when the Logris guys started, they started in the same sort of like hang a function off a package style, because that actually turns out to be a really useful pattern. And then they, they came back around at the end of the day and, and provided the ability to go create additional ones and to have field, you know, field logger interfaces and that kind of stuff. So they, you know, they, they followed a, a really good path on starting the whole thing out. Um, cool. And that's, that's sort of it for the stuff that I wanted to sort of focus on recently in a, NSM. Are there other things that have recently landed in NSM that people wanted to point to or discuss? If not, I think we should uh, uh, move on to Ivana, who has some uh, discussion about visualizing tra uh, traffic metrics. Hi, I, I wanted to share what I researched, tried out. Uh, I'm just would like to share screen, did some small presentation just to help follow up. Um, I will stop sharing. Uh, huh. or, or I can't. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll probably leave for a second just to stop sharing. <laughs> okay. There we go. Um, okay, so do you see my screen now? Do. Uh, great, just a second. Uh, oh, I don't see my screen. Yeah, I see it now. Uh, so what we discussed is uh, just to have uh, some good way to, uh, some good tool to visualize uh, the uh, topology that is deployed via NSM on all the clients, endpoints, and uh, the traffic going between them, the dropped packages, the successful RxTx packages, etc. Uh, just uh, not not just by uh, looking at Prometheus or some other ways, but uh, to have a good uh, graphic way of that. Uh, and uh, for that, I, I did some research. I looked at uh, the CNCF landscape and actually almost all of the projects uh, except Kiali don't work for us. They are they are a bit off topic and not exactly what we need. They don't represent topology and things like that. Uh, very, very different from what we are looking for. Uh, the open metrics project was said to be uh, that the plan is uh, to be the standard for uh, for kind of visualizing such things, but actually uh, the project is uh, a bit frozen for the last six months and I saw an issue as with someone asking for estimates when, when their API is going to be shared and they don't, they, they say they're working on it, but they don't give any estimates. So this is not something to consider in the moment. And many of you know about Kiali. Yeah, it was uh, presented uh, on the previous calls. Uh, it's actually a very good tool. It shows exactly what we need, uh, topologies, it has metrics and other stuff. Uh, and the it's uh, this is its architecture front end. It has back end that uh, takes data from Prometheus, which we have uh, for the old NSM API, and we would like to also have for the new API. Uh, but the problems here is that it is a very uh, 
tightly uh, coupled with Istio. I played a bit with it and it needs, uh, actually it needs uh, a lot of work in order to decouple this from Istio. Uh, it doesn't work with uh, very well with kind. It cannot be deployed if you don't have, uh, it, it deployed only with these two together can be separately deployed uh, it's it needs to to have helm charts decouple the deployment from Istio or support uh, kind and also it needs to decouple we need to decouple the implementation because the current API is uh, very strictly uh, corresponding to Istio's API uh, and uh, if we choose to use this tool, we need to join the community, ask them what they think about that, or they like to make the tool more general, and would they agree that we can do all those efforts. Uh, the other thing that we already have is skydive. I think it's pretty nice way of visualizing. We have metrics there, but uh, uh, they are uh, from interface to interface, not uh, the way that we expose them lately to be from pod to pod, from client to endpoint. Uh, we don't have uh, yet uh, support for a path. Uh, but uh, yeah, where we reached, it's uh, before the path was implemented and we had just uh, client and endpoint pods and uh, we had uh, data for the metrics between specific clients and endpoints. With what we have in Skydive uh, by now, uh, we don't have uh, exposed information about the pods we have just for the network interfaces. And we still have some things to do there. Uh, I tried to deploy in kind, had some issues there. Uh, and I still, I'll contact Matt maybe. he. I think he succeeded to deploy with kind uh, and we need to uh, we have a choice to update the NSM probe uh, with the Prometheus integration or I think uh, what is better is just to uh, create a separate probe uh, that is uh, just for Prometheus because we have the data exposed there and we don't need to uh, to be tied to the NSM probe here it will be more generic yeah, I think that's almost certainly a good idea to, to try and, and tie it to Prometheus. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it just uh, better abstraction. I think it, I think it will be a bit easier instead of editing, and we st still can use the old probe. But yeah, that's uh, with the Prometheus probe. If we implement that, we would need to somehow because uh, what we store currently in Prometheus, we have uh, the pod names uh, as labels. We would like to uh, add path segments uh, as labels as well uh, for the matrix cure uh, data, and we would need to uh, uh, to take those labels and build the topology on. Uh, top of them, just to have the labels as uh, vertexes in the graph and have the matrix for specific labels uh, shown. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't uh, try out uh, with that, uh, didn't do any estimates, uh, whether it will be trivial or it will be more uh, tricky to implement. Uh, and uh, actually, yeah, this is uh, what uh, was I did this a bit of research, tried out some things by now, and I opened an issue. So uh, I would like to hear the opinion of the community, what uh, you think would be better to focus on? What do you think on that idea? Do you have any other ideas, any other projects, um, et cetera? So one other idea that occurs to me, and I, I literally don't have any idea if this is a good one or a bad one, um, is there appear to be some topology visualization plugins for Grafana, which is what's sitting directly on top of Prometheus anyway. Um, I have no idea if this is good, bad, or indifferent. I just don't know. Um, but it, it's, it might be worth taking a look at. Uh, I think, I'm not sure if I uh, 
checked exactly what you're talking about. I tried out some things. Actually, what I found by now is uh, some uh, charts, uh, visualized charts exposed on Grafana, but uh, what we need is to have the topology visualized uh, if you see something like here. And I don't know if there is something integrated with Grafana that works like that. I will check as well. Yeah, so they, they do have a diagram plugin that comes up with a ton of quick Googling. I literally, literally have no idea if it's good or bad. I mean, the, the, the lovely thing with Kali is Kali is just beautiful, right? It's mm. just pretty. Um, and it would be very nice to have something like Kali. Yeah, it's just uh, with Kali, I think it's if uh, this is the visualization tool for Istio, it might become a standard for uh, service mesh. I think Nikolai found out someone that uh, decoupled it and uh, deployed it with Linkerd. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the question here is uh, the effort that it needs. Uh, it, it will need some dedicated effort to officially decouple from Istio and have it as a general oh, tool. Yeah. Will they agree? Do we want to invest that effort? Uh, and yeah, this is actually the question here, but I think uh, to me, it feels like uh, the best option in terms of end result, if we have that, it would be great. Uh, skydive is the easier way. Uh, but uh, yeah, the question is, do we want to stick to skydive or we want to have some dashboard like that? Um, yep. Yep. No, that, that, that's, this is good. Thank you for sort of driving this. I, I think this actually is going to become super important and will actually end up making for super happy users. Yeah, I uh, I don't actually don't know how much. I think it's enough interactive and good. It would be really great to have. Yep. Cool. If anyone has an opinion on that, if you think uh, that, oh, if you have opinion on what uh, solution we should choose that would be great. I I'm still trying to estimate and find out what's better, but yeah, I'd like to hear the other people opinion on that before focusing some effort on this. So if you have any pros and cons regarding some of the proposals would be great to share. So I think one of the questions that would be interesting to me, but I'm, I'm, if Mats is not here, probably, I don't know uh, if someone else can answer for him. Um, what's the story uh, of Skype Dive? Um, like, I mean, it was obviously chosen to be the tool that we used to have till now. Um, it feels kind of abundant on our end. I think that the tool itself goes on. Um, I have seen other uh, versions and implementations uh, with some other plugins that were showing uh, traffic statistics, etc. Not for NSM, just for, I think it was something with uh, VPP integration. Uh, I mean, uh, how do we feel about it in general as a, as a community? Is this something that is kind of a standard uh, within the Let's say networkish, uh, you know, telco type of uh, workloads and providers. Yeah, I don't know. Do, do folks have experience, or do they see some trending in terms of people converging on on something particular? We, we, we've got a lot of experience in this call, so hopefully, someone's seen something. We all use CLI. <laughs> okay, so we need a CLI presentation of the graphs, right? I mean, <laughs> whips. 
okay. <laughs> okay. No, because uh, I I do agree here. If if we want to have the wow, you know, effect, it would be really to to be able to say, okay, so this is your Kiali, and now it shows you your Istio, and now it shows you your NSM, and it's just like, yeah. But that's obviously a you know, longer discussion and... Um, there was a yeah. comment on the chat about uh, Figlet. <laughs> yeah. you, you said uh, you like the... Uh, someone said that uh, they like the CLI, so... <laughs> yeah, as a, as a programmer, we, we tend to like CLI things, but uh, having been on the operational side, I can see the value of... Um, visual things. Um, interestingly, um, perhaps the question is not what do people use, but should there should there be one um, uh, that, that was being asked? And I think the, I'm pretty confident the answer is yes, there, there should be something, something there. Um, one of the things that is going to strike me as uh, potentially lacking in all of the solutions, though, is we we have uh, a concept of a connection that in many scenarios spans multiple hops and uh and you can think of it, think of it like the vy that span that ends up uh spanning multiple multiple hops and i don't think any of them will nicely show this um and so regardless as to which one we take uh, that'll probably be a, a limit that we'll have to just call out. But I, it's one thing to consider is uh, the complexity of adding such a such a feature into uh, into one of the solutions, and whether they may be amenable to it as well. Where, uh, like, we wanted to show a specific specific connection going through, you know, went through this firewall, went through this intrusion detection system, went through this VPN gateway to this VPN concentrator, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, being able to show that entire uh, chain and what's going on with a specific chain uh, would be uh, would be uh, very nice. Uh, although we do have a way to potentially um, help with this. Like if we have a, a monitor that goes across the entire chain and we hook that only that monitor up to one of these solutions, then we can um, we can approximate that so that they don't have to support it natively. So it may end up not being an issue, um, but it's something to to think about. Like what should, what should that thing look like from a from an NSM native way? And uh, Prismic also added uh, a GUI topology view, which is in uh, in Onos, but does not know how relevant it is. So that's something else we could toss onto the list to take a look at. Yeah, I used it one one cent. It looks really cool, but I have no idea what's the underlying technology and how relevant that is for NSM. I would bet on some monolithic Java. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Is there uh, anything else that we want to discuss on this topic? Does anyone want to take as an action item uh, investigating uh, this or uh, should we just uh, stick it in the ice box for now for someone to eventually pick up later on? Um, I can investigate uh, the other proposals as well. Uh, and yeah, if, what good if uh, there is some uh, common uh, community agreement on, I just don't want to lose uh, effort on something we would not prefer to be the solution. So uh, I can share feedback from, I can try out what uh, was shared. Uh, it's an addition and uh, yeah, maybe if we can uh, stick to something that uh, we decide would be the way to go. Um, I think it's better to choose something and uh, dedicate the efforts there. Or yeah, it depends on the amount. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. At least 
um, the important, I guess there's two important things to look at. Number one is like, what do we use in some, like imagine there's like a, a reference architecture of, of NSM. And I think the kind uh, of installation that the, the installation that we have in terms of uh, installing Spiffy, uh, Spire and OPA and NSM and all that kind of stuff into the same cluster uh, through our through our make and build system is probably the closest thing we have to a reference architecture at this point. And so anything, so on one path, it's like, how do we make it easier for people to see what's going on and to to understand the concepts, to play around with it, to see what's going on. Uh, the other side of that as well, though, is we need to make sure that uh, often these decisions are made uh, cross cutting across multiple uh, project uh, products. So in the long run, we're going to end up having to ask the question, does this work with the plethora of commercial utilities that are out there? And, and not the UI side, but the collection and reporting side. And so this is, uh, this is also uh, the beginning of, of answering such a question as to like, how do we effectively communicate with, uh, with those particular types of systems? So, uh, so I think this is this is definitely heading in the right um, uh, in the right path to help answer both questions. Okay, are there any other topics that people would like to discuss? Uh. Okay, well, if there are, oops, I got muted. Um, if there are no other topics, then we will yield back uh, 12 minutes of time. Thank you everyone for attending and we will see you all again at the end of, or at Tuesday next week at the same time. And remember your CFPs are due uh, in a few days. So if you intend to add something in, please make sure you, you get those in as soon as possible. Uh, I have I have no other way to remind you during any future meetings. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Cheers.